what I like about Jersey the, for me because I don't drive, so I, I like the, I don't go anywhere. And yes, my wife to get me out of the house is very difficult. I go to church on a Sunday, I walk home. But what I, I love about Jersey, I could ride anywhere, but, but, but I like it here. I go for a walk with the dog every day and, and uh, give him some exercise, give myself. Because you're sitting here for nine hours, I sit here for nine hours to write, nine o'clock, coffee break, lunch break, then back at two till five, have a tea break, then come back up at six till seven, quarter past seven, then out with the dog, come in for dinner at eight. So it's a routine. Mm -hmm. I'm very much like that. I, I, I stick to the, the work ethic. I, I, I like that. There's a man desperate down looking for a wife. If he can find the right one, he'll explode. Says he like woman like cycling in the new. No one girl as yet, no one should. I like the business. I don't get involved in it. I don't go to parties, I don't go to receptions, I stay at home, but I keep my ears and eyes on, on what's going on. I buy everything. Passenger is good. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely song. Pink, I like Pink. The Abbey Girl, Ellie Goulding, John Mayer, I like John Mayer. So, you know, I buy everything just to hear what's going on and to, you know, for production pr purposes. And you can never stop learning, which is a good thing. about the, the songwriting process is that you start with the tune, so the tune is there, it might be a slow tune, a fast tune, and you've no idea, unless you've already got a title, what it's going to be about. So this is kind of an empty notebook. And the song I'm writing now, I, I didn't know what it was going to be called until I'm sort of a third of the way through, whether it's a hook line or... So it's a, it's a fascinating, fascinating process. I love it. If I give up the sea I've been saving some elderly lady, oh man, am I being a good boy, am I your pride and joy, mother please, if you please say I am, and if while in the course of my duty, I perform an unfortunate tape, would you punish me so unbelievably so, never again will I make this feeling inside me could never deny me the right to be wrong if I choose. And this pleasure I get from say winning a bet is to The only downside of lyric writing is it takes so much time. It's, and, and you end up writing more verses than you need. That's a joy too, because you, the average song has maybe three or four verses, mm -hmm. maybe a middle section you repeat. But like Leonard Cohen, what, I'm, what I do is I tend to rhyme more and more. So by the 10th verse, I should really stop. But my little bird in me says, no, do the 11th verse, because it's such, such fun. You know, the, it's an interesting thing when you're, when you're singing the lyrics you write. Sometimes the perfect rhyme doesn't sound as good as the unperfect line. So you have also have that there. And very often the extra verses I write to a song, sometimes they all sound better than the ones that on paper look better. So it always helps to have those extra, extra lines. I've no wish to hurry you love, but have you seen the time? It's quarter to 10 and we're supposed to be there at nine. I don't think the registrar will be very pleased. When we show up an hour late like two frozen peas. Both now facing for the first time presently and past. Something that begins with them and ends in a lass. More than a complete disaster, even from the start. What could it be? It's matrimony. And I'm always searching for melodies. It's like Irvin Berlin said, you know, if you come up with a good melody, you can stick it in your trunk and leave it. Because good melodies don't die. I mean, I love writing lyrics, but I'm quite happy if somebody likes the melody and doesn't listen to the lyric too much. But for me, they are equally as important. I would never write a good lyric and say it doesn't need a good tune. I would never write a good tune and say it doesn't need a good lyric. The two are equally important. Oh, I'm truly grateful for the 
little things in life that have made me so glad. Every other hour that I spend with you is not the least bit sad. Quite the opposite, in fact, and if you don't believe me, here's the proof. Ask me if I, and they'll say I, I do. And because I'm a 9 to 5 writer, obviously I, I, I write beyond the 12 or 13 songs that I'll need for an album. But, but I, I just make notes and, and I keep them all. Everything is kind of worked, marked, clearly. And they're all good stuff. There's a good title there called Growing Old Disgracefully. I have a song called That's a Really Good Song. Don't Get Under Each Other's Skin, that's another nice song. There's a really good song called Love Is Like a Good Divorce. It's a great title for a song. So I, it's fascinating. Love is like a good divorce. Love is like a good divorce. Don't put that in. Somebody else will use it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Where did I hear that? Claire, the moment I met you, I swear, I felt as if something somewhere had happened to me, which I couldn't see. Claire is special because Claire is about a real person, my manager's daughter. And remember in those early days, I used to go up to their house. He lived on a private estate, St. George's Hills, where people like Humperdinck and Tom Jones lived. And his wife, Jo, a very special lady, a great cook. So she'd cook for me and I'd have lunch with them. Sometimes they would say to me, Ray, you know, babysit. They had four children there, could you babysit? Claire was the youngest. No problem, I come from a family of six children. So I'm used to being around children. And so I used to babysit, and Claire was always kind of getting up in the night. So I thought it would be nice as a tribute to the parents. And at that time, with so much success, it was very special to them, very special to her, it still is. And, uh, but that's one of the few songs actually written about somebody that's, that's quite clear what it's about. It's so, so important, it, has, it resonates so heavily in you. Not just as a listener, but there's more to it, which allows you to go to a keyboard or a guitar, copy the tune, and then eventually come up with an original tune. It's a quite a unique thing. To this day, I never really analyze it. Analysis is dangerous. You know, how do you do it? Why do you do it? I mean, if you spend your time worrying about how, why, if, you end up not doing anything. So just get on with the work. Don't analyze, just do. You're not really trying to write for a particular audience. Again, that's a dangerous thing to try and do. You hear people say, I can write hits. You know, Stock Aiken and Waterman used yeah. to say, everything we write's a hit, really? I think you just do, you just do the, what you hope is a good song and you hope somebody likes it.